Well, the San Diego hot tub curmudgeon speaks again. And tonight I will speak to address uh, Elijah's discussion of friend groups. And I think that the way that I could best do that would be to share with you a little sermonette that I gave at the wedding of uh, my oldest son and my youngest son. After the, uh, after my delivery of the wedding of my oldest son, uh, the Lutheran minister made some snarky comment about that uh, it would be good at a holy time like this that uh, we you know, talk about Jesus. There was no mention of Jesus in my talk. And, uh, and then after the service, uh, Christine's mother said, I had no idea Mormons were that intelligent. You know, you can be surprised by a lot of things. And then uh, at Adam's wedding, when I gave this talk, uh, apparently it upset everyone in her family and upset her, and therefore Adam was upset. And just in general, the talk was not well received. So here's the idea. There is a play by Neil Simon I can't remember, but it's autobiographical, and it, it tells about uh, that after his wife died of cancer, uh, there was a, a young, attractive dancer lived downstairs in his building, and she started putting the moves on him. And they did a few things together, and uh, they hit it off, and it seemed like there was some possibilities there, but, you know, he just kept himself at a distance, and and when she kind of pushed in a little too far into his uh, privacy, his space, he lashed out and he said, you know, I went from A to P with that woman. I don't want to start over at A with you. So because she died too young, he only got to P with that woman. And... He just couldn't imagine taking the mental energy to start over at A with someone else. And I think I know what that is. Now, what you may notice is that there's quite a few people out there that make it about 18 months into a relationship. And it's I, I say that it's at 18 months when you begin to realize that you have not been in love with the other person you have been in love with the ideal of that person that you projected onto them. Big difference. And so they won't pick up their underwear. They won't do their share of the dishes and the laundry. They won't take out the garbage. Uh, they talk too much. They go to bed at the wrong time. They wake up at the wrong time. They like the wrong kind of coffee. And so at 18 months, it's like, screw this, I'm moving on. So there are people who seem to be perfectly happy doing that, you know, jumping ship every 18 months, drying somebody else out for 18 months. And I'll call that sort of a horizontal skipping relationship, like skipping a rock on water. Don't go, they don't get very deep into it. Well. But you know, if you stay with that person past that 18 month wall and you work your way through the wall, you end up as somebody different on the other side of the wall and the relationship also is different. And it's my observation that if on the near side of the wall, you could see who you're gonna become on the other side and what the relationship would become on the other side, you might not want it, but you know, after you've paid the price and come to the other side of the wall, you don't want to go back. And so let's see, maybe you have some kids and all of a sudden the wall is, um, hey, you lazy bastard, you said you wanted to have kids, so where are you? And his attitude is, hey, you know, I used to be the center of your life and I ain't anymore. What, what the hell is this? 
we can have kids and I can still be the center of your life. And, you know, some folks don't make it past that wall. But if you do make it on past that wall, well, then later, much later, those kids move out. And now she doesn't have a purpose. This is traditional mothering um, and it's nem empty nest syndrome. And so she's thrashing around trying to figure out, well, then who am I? And how do I get caught up on all of the, um, all of the employment opportunities that I let pass up over those 18 years? How do I get caught up? And so that's a nasty wall. And there are people who break up. It's like, well, you know, we were together for the kids. The kids ain't here, so goodbye. I'm going to Montana to go fly fishing. Well, uh, and then maybe you, see, you make it through that wall. And, you know, again, you're very different people. The relationship's very different, but you wouldn't want to go back. And maybe another wall is he retires, and now he's home all the time. And like, why in the hell are you in my house all of the time? And... Mads, why don't we ever go anywhere? Why don't we travel? Why do we got to stay home all the time? So, you know, maybe you'll make it through that wall. Now, regarding Neil Simon, I'd say that last wall is considerably past P. But the point remains, you lose that partner. You made it from A to R and geez, you don't want to go back and start over at letter A with somebody else. So, if you can find a friend group that's a, a lot of fun, I don't think you ever have to worry about walls. You don't have to, you don't have to change yourself. Uh, and you don't have to, like, uh, work on the relationship to have it be something that can get through a wall to the other side. You don't have to do any of that, you know? You got this gang of friends, you have a good time, somebody's a dick, well, you just, you don't hang around with them anymore. You maybe figure out a way to exclude them from the group or cut off a part of the group that does not include them. And uh, you just sort of coast along with a nice little cushion of friends that uh, don't cause you any stress, don't demand any growth from you. Myself, I prefer to go from A to P and risk that there's more. I think there is. Just this evening, Don and I had a little argument because I said something a little too aggressively and it, what I said was really kind of stupid. And so she eventually forgave me and she came over and gave me a big hug and she kissed me. And, and then later as I was heading into the bathtub here, I said, you know what? Life is too short to have squandered a half hour missing your affection. I don't ever want to say a stupid thing that chops a half hour of your affection out of the time we have left. You know, a few days ago she was saying, have you thought about how horrible it is that in four more years we're going to be 70? And I said, God, I, I hope to God that in four years I am 70. And then, you know, a while later she was complaining about that, uh, She's uh, getting old, you know, and that uh, what's that like to deal with the diminishment of self in the growing old process? And I said, you know, for myself, I don't quite see it that way with this uh, boogered up plumbing next to my heart. Uh, I sort of see life and aging and death as more of a quantum on or off, alive or dead situation. I don't see no gradual uh, diminishment. I just kind of feel like every day is a gift. So I highly recommend it. Find somebody you want to go through walls with. Or hell, don't. Find a group of people that you can just sort of bounce around like, you know, in your one of those 
beds full of uh, plastic balls, red, blue, and yellow balls, and just sort of roll around with your friends and have a high-ho time and tell with the rest of them. Good night.